so we we come in with uh, off of a off of a good result again with uh, with ourselves having uh, you know done well any time that we have a chance to uh, get a long preparation for uh, for the match the game in, the game in uh, Oxford was uh, was good for us it was nice to see uh, Jasmine Wilkinson get two goals and assist big big night for her which she's been working hard um, all season long and has come so close so many times, our leading scorer from last year. So to get her um, on track is a, is a big part of our success for uh, uh, our plan for this year. Um, Grace Ivy continues to, uh, to really have a great season. She scores again uh, on the night. And then uh, Sid Becerra again, you know, dishing out assists and, uh, and setting up people right and left was, uh, was outstanding. Uh, Taylor Jernigan with another goal on the season, also uh, terrific. Uh, our goalkeeper, our freshman goalkeeper, was a freshman of the week in the SEC this this week. Um, that's the second time for her, which is terrific. She's been uh, really a uh, fantastic addition for us in goal and uh, a big part of our success. So as Thomas said, we're uh, currently fourth in fourth place in the SEC. We're only uh, three points, only one win out of first place. And uh, this is a, uh, a big week for us. Uh, Vanderbilt coming to town. Vanderbilt really handed it to us last year. Um, it really thumped us last year up in Nashville. And this was a uh, uh, this week last year was a, a big turnaround week for us because having uh, just being being smashed by them in Nashville and then having to turn around and play the defending uh, SEC champions uh, Alabama here uh, on the Sunday. Um, and getting a getting a result against them kind of turned our season, and from that point on, really was uh, was the kind of the thing that catapulted us and and uh, gave us a great finish to the season. So we're hoping that we can uh, you know use the uh, four one win um, on the road to uh, kind of get us get ourselves a little bit of momentum. Um, knowing Vanderbilt is such a strong team, you know they only have two losses on the on the season. Only one loss in uh, in the SEC. That was to the number one team in the country. So their quality side, really, the way they play again, they thumped us last year six nothing. So they're a team that has been able to solve us in the in the past. So it'd be a very very difficult game. I know there's a bunch of uh, uh, promotions for the game on Thursday at seven at seven o'clock. There's uh, I want to say that there's a, a beer special. There's a, a lot of point specials going on with uh, the 12th man rewards. So uh, important for us to hopefully get the 12th man out to uh, help us in this re really, really important match. I'll open up for any questions. We'll start with uh, Richard. Coach, you mentioned the loss to Vanderbilt a year ago. How much additional motivation does that add to the preparation for this game? And then also looking at their conference record, how much of a opportunity do you look at this match to pick up those three points you were talking about to get back into the title race? Well, they're ahead of us in the RPI. They're behind us in the SEC standings, but they're ahead of us in the RPI. Um, you know, they're a top 40 team in the RPI, and that that in itself is a, is a huge motivator for me. Um, you know, having been thumped by them last year, hopefully it'll be something for our players. Um, you know, they, t they had seven shots on goal and scored six goals last year, so they were the the picture of uh, perfection in uh, in the final third. Um, you know, Rachel Dureski, who's their their striker, is is a fantastic player. Um, but the way that they set things up, they're great in possession. They're one of the teams that if you lose the ball to them, you may not, may not get it back. They're so good in in possessing and moving the ball. And I think Darren uh, Ambrose, their coach, uh, has that's been a kind of a, a you know one of the things that they've really made a part of their of their program is that they're going to be very good when they get the ball. They're very good in wide spaces and creating those scoring chances. So, um, I mean, they've, they've always been a really tough out. Um, you know, we've, we've been fortunate here. We've been, we've been pretty good against them, but it's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a big out. This will be a, a tough, tough game for us. And if we can find a way to get a result, it'd be, uh, it'd be huge. And it, this year, uh, you know, you can see in football how all of a sudden, you know, anyone can beat anybody. But that's the way it's always been in soccer, especially the last three or four years, is that anyone can step up and beat anybody. And that's the way it was last week. You had, you know, teams anywhere in the standings were stepping up and beating anybody. Florida beat Texas. Um, you had uh, Mississippi State beat beat uh, number one Arkansas. You had, you know, all kinds of, of games going against the uh, the rankings were, were happening. So we know that, you know, on any given night, anything can happen, and we've got to 
do what we can to hold home field advantage, especially when we have a chance to play at Ellis Field in front of the 12th man. We'll go back TV row to Tyler. Coach, you mentioned, uh, you know, Sydney Fuller and her freshman of the week honor for the second time. Just what kind of performance did you see from her uh, against Ole Miss and what she's brought to this team? Well, her stature is, uh, is is one thing that I think brings a lot of confidence to the team. I mean, you know, the fact that she's, you know, almost six feet tall. She's very, very good in the air. Um, she's a very good shot stopper. Uh, you know, she because of because of that stature, because of her presence, um, you know, she changes shot selection by by her opponents, forces them to have to kind of rethink the, the what they're going to do, and you know, some of that rethinking, uh, you know, forces them to you know miss, and sometimes you know it forces you know them to take a little bit extra time, which allows our you know our great defenders to to close people down a little bit more. Um, she's been able to uh, you know you know, save and, and, uh, and redirect, you know, shots as far as being a shot stopper. But as much as anything, people who are taking uh, restarts and free kicks against us, because she's so good and so dominant in the air, I mean, it just makes it, her range becomes so much greater and it'll, it allows our players to play with that much more confidence. And we'll go to the other side to Ben. Speaking to confidence, uh, you know, I know you guys have had a few games earlier on the year where Felt like maybe squandered some good chances you had in terms of the attack, but to have another game with four goals, you know, right after having four goals against Auburn a couple of games ago, how much is, does that help with confidence? How nice is that to see that? Yeah, I think um, you know we've been creating chances all all season long. Um, you know, in in my uh, in our interview with uh, television folks from uh, Ole Miss last week, I, I guess I, I hadn't really occurred to me that we had created more scoring chances than just about anyone in the league. Um, when they had mentioned that to me, I was like, oh, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, you know, but we hadn't finished all the chances. Um, so it was nice to see, uh, it was nice to see Jazz especially, you know, get, get herself on the end of some of those crosses. And then also for her to be able to, to uh, set other people up, set up uh, uh, Grace Ivy who gets forward from the, her midfield position um, was terrific. And we, we worked a lot on that in, uh, in the time leading up to the old Miss game, on how we wanted to be more active in the penalty area, how we wanted to be more active in uh, in those wide channels to uh, give ourselves better chances, better service. So it's uh, like I said, it, it was it's always been a work in progress, and it's always been something that we've been excited about creating those chances because there's a lot of teams that aren't creating those chances. They were scoring, you know, the goals that were being scored against us were some phenomenal shots that were being scored against us, and we were we were creating chances that we were just kind of squandering. So learning from those, those situations in the past, learning from those, those, uh, those times that didn't go right for us, being able to go back and adjust them have, have been good. So now, you know, this is going to be, this week is a, a real uptick in, um, in the quality of our opponent. You know, we're not gonna be able to squander chances because these are teams that, again, like I said, if we lose it, we're not gonna get the ball back from these teams from both Vanderbilt and from Alabama. And they both have got great attacking players, uh, like I said, um, you know, with, uh, with Doreski and with uh, Watts, with Vanderbilt. And then especially on Sunday when you've got, you know, Gianna Paul, who is a game breaker in the way that she plays. Um, if you make mistakes against these guys, they are going to make you pay for it. And we've got to be the same in the way that we attack. We got Alex in the front row. Yeah, he, he kind of answered my question, but I guess maybe just from a, maybe a psyche standpoint, when, when Jazz is finally able to connect on multiple of those chances, uh, what, what, what's that kind of do for her mentality, I guess, and just the way you saw her demeanor maybe during and then after that, that game? Well, I think it. I think it helps everyone grow. I mean, you, know, you grow in in your stature that when you feel good. You know, if you're if you're a golfer and you 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 know you're going to hit the uh, fairway every time, then you step up to the tee box and you just you just you just know you're ready to put the ball down and, and hit it. Well, it's the same thing when you're when you're a striker. You want the ball. You just want the ball because you know that there's a better than average chance that you're going to put that ball on frame. And if you put the ball on frame, there's a good chance that it's going to either go in or you're going to put the ball in a position where the goalkeeper either has to save it or pick the ball out of, the, out of her net, or she's going to put a rebound in front of it, and then we're going to finish off that, that next chance. So. Um, and, and if you saw her her post game interviews afterwards, I mean she's so um, 
she's such a team player. You know, she talked all all the way about how it was about her teammates setting her up, and it wasn't about her. It was about you know my teammates did this for me. Um, I was just I was just kind of the exclamation point at the end of the sentence, and and that's that's the way she is. She's a you know she is a great. She's been a great addition to the team, but she's just she's just a big part of what this team has been in uh, setting that up. Same thing with with the rest of our strikers who have been there. So it's neat to see. And uh, you know we had uh, for the first time, uh, Bree Severins was also you know in the lineup. This is Bree's a uh, as a transfer from the University of Kansas, and this was her first game that she was able to uh, play. She's been coming off of injuries uh, that she had at KU, and now she's able to finally. Um, get in there and, and be uh, kind of in the mix for us. So it's nice to see some of these things coming online for us as we get into the real crux of, of SEC play as we go into the second half of, uh, of the SEC race.